Today, we continue our journey around the fantasy basketball world, chatting with Matt Smith from Basketball Monster. Let's go balls deep. Welcome to another episode of the Balls Deep Fantasy Basketball Podcast, uh, hosted by me, Adam King, at AdamKing91 on Twitter is where you can find me. FBIBasketball.com is the website. Uh, head over there, check out all of our content. Uh, Matt Lawson has a ton of Dynasty stuff out at the moment, so jump in if you are looking to get into Dynasty. As I said, uh, just continuing chatting with uh, fantasy basketball analysts, something we've been doing for the last uh, few weeks. I have Matt Smith on. Good to have a fellow Aussie so I can actually record this at a normal time and not stupidly early in the morning. Matt, how are you? Good, thanks, Kingy. How are you? Uh, yeah, good. Good. It's Yeah, it's weird recording with, with lights on. And normally, <laughs> it's it's just the sun's coming up. So um, you've got... Uh, You've got your little one down for the night. Mine are occupied watching a movie with my wife, so they're all fine. <laughs> um, so this is just, uh, yeah, yeah. look, I've spoken with about 10 analysts already. We just thought we'd roll out some content during the off-season, um, just talking about what we do behind the scenes, what we do outside of fantasy basketball, because this isn't our, this isn't our um, full-time job for a lot of us. For some, it is. Uh, for me, it's not. And I don't think it is for you either. Is that the case? No, part-time job. So, yeah, work full-time. And then, yeah, fantasy basketball is is my after-hours part-time work. But I'm very fortunate to be with Basketball Monster. And, yeah, looking forward to having a chat all about it tonight with you. Yeah, so so I guess um, in terms of fantasy basketball, I mean, well, I mean, starting off, this isn't your full-time job. So what 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 is it that you do um, sort of during the day? Yeah, so I, I work in um, sport and recreation. Been in mm. in the industry for about twelve years now, in the same role for for the last ten. So yeah, lucky enough to to work in an industry that I love and I'm passionate about, and have a great job, and yeah, get to um, be in and around sport all day, every day. It does make it easy. Like I, I know I've spoken to a few analysts already who have sort of shifted away from their full time career into fantasy basketball because they didn't enjoy their career um and i would assume if, i mean you've been working in sport and you sat in the same role for 10 years so you probably really enjoy what you do and and look forward to going to work and much like me i i love my day job as well as this job so i'm i'm pretty fortunate in that regard um so f in terms of fantasy basketball how did you sort of get to where you are now i suppose it, for, for me it was started as a hobby that sort of just mm -hmm built and built how how did it sort of happen for you yeah mine's a probably a long story but i i started playing fantasy basketball back in about 2000 2001 um i guess during the the mid to late 90s it was just playing video games and, and basketball video games and got into into basketball that way and i'd played i guess a lot of different fantasy sports as a kid and a teenager and then, yeah, playing the video games led me into fantasy basketball and the NBA. And I think my first ever sort of fantasy basketball was actually a playoff in a playoff um, league, you know, yeah, in the early 2000s. And and that sort of got me going. And, and then, yeah, had obviously played ever since. And um, I guess starting in the, in the industry, so, so to speak, it was probably – it was nearly 10 years ago to the day – um, where I saw an advert on, I think it was a, a site called US Sports Down Under, which I believe now is as a shop where you can buy some merchandise. But I saw an advert about wanting NBA riders and I thought, oh, yeah, maybe that's something, you know, I could do and had a bit of yeah. spare time and thought I knew a little bit about, about the game and wanted to promote, you know, the NBA and basketball down here in Australia. So I thought, oh, why not? And I applied and they got back to me and said, you know, yeah, let's let's do it. So my, I was having a, a bit of a look back the other day. My first ever article was actually, a, I guess, a scouting report or a draft profile on Matthew Della Vadova leading, oh. 
2013 NBA draft. Um, so there was him and then there was Brock Modem. And then I think I did one on Stephen Adams as well. Okay. And that was kind of my first little taste about, you know, writing and having articles live on the internet, which was a little bit daunting at the time. And and then towards, you know, after the draft finish and heading into the season, I said, can I do some fantasy content? Because that was, that was what I wanted to do and been playing at that stage for, yeah, probably 12 or 13 years. And they said, yeah, go for it. So they gave me a... A, um, a free reign and a license to pretty much write whatever I wanted. And and again, I think at that stage, it was fairly simple stuff. It was sort of your first round draft picks and your top five players at each position and yeah. just more intro- introductory stuff to, to new players playing and um, spent a little bit of time with them. And then, um, yeah, it was interacting with um, a couple of the guys from Fantasy Hoops Insider on, on social media and, and they sort of said, yeah, do you want to write some content for us? And said, yeah, sure. And again, a US sort of based site and podcast and, and open up some some doors and avenues there. So again, again, pretty much had a free reign on, on what I wanted to write and did some rankings and articles and, and did my first podcast with them. Um, yeah, going back, you know, nine and a half years ago. And and it was funny you saying about recording at a good hour, my first podcast with them, I think I sat up until about... 1am in the morning Australia time because obviously with the time difference and when they were recording. So I was sitting in the in the family room in, in the pitch black and we just recorded a podcast. Yeah, they were the good old days. And then, yeah, again, spent a season or two with them. We did a draft kit, which was over 100 pages long. And I think I estimated at some stage I spent nearly 300 hours working wow. on this and producing yeah. this with a whole whole bunch of other guys so that was that was good fun and, and a lot of hard work and a lot of hours and then from there spent a I think a season or maybe two seasons with fantasy pros um I was doing the the um player blurbs and player notes for the Phoenix Suns who are my favorite team in the NBA um so again you know that's sort of after every game typing about you know the the game um, and the stats and the performance of those players and yeah so from there that led me into uh, Rotowire um, and joined them and and around that time yeah you know Josh Lloyd started up his Red Rock um, fantasy basketball podcast yeah. so I got chatting with Josh and you know was on a few of his pods and again we were sort of growing the game from an Australian point of view and then yeah we both ended up at, at, at Rotowire and there was again some nights where Again, this sort of time at night, 7.30, 8 o'clock, where Josh and I would work, you know, he would host his podcast and occasionally I'd be a guest on there and then we'd record the Road Away um, podcast together. So there were yeah. some nights where it was two to two and a half hours of just talking fantasy basketball in the evening. And then, um, yeah, so there was Josh. Kyle McEwen was one of our editors um, at Road Away and he he taught me a lot about writing and, and articles and, and – um, yeah, really helped me out there. And then, yeah, Josh and Kyle um, joined Basketball Monster. And then they were looking for someone else to with with um, Ken over there, Ken Slight, and looking for someone else to come on board and do a bit of content as well. So, um, yeah, lucky enough they reached out to me and, of course, said yes. And we've just finished our eighth season together at Basketball Monster. So, yeah, within the space of, I guess, two and a half years, went from, from nothing to – working at, well, I say the premier fantasy basketball site yep. in the world, and I think it's widely regarded as, as that. So, yeah, very fortunate to to be where I am today. Yeah, and, and I think, I mean, I've, I've spoken with Kyle already, I've spoken with Josh already, and it's going to be interesting listening back to these to hear, like, everyone's sort of got the parts of the same story but from a different perspective and, and a common sort of theme – uh, and for me as well has been RotoWire. I think that's mm-hmm. been a nice entry point for a lot of analysts who have who have come in. Um, and and I, yeah, some have stuck around. And and I just think that's a. I think the takeaway for me for well for anyone listening for this to this either is that there's probably a period if if you do want to get into fantasy basketball writing or podcasting, there's going to be a period of time where you're probably going to have to do a lot for nothing or a lot for very little like it's it it is a bit of a slow ramp up but once you sort of get your foot in the door things can move along 
reasonably quickly. Um, and, and yeah, I mean, it's like for me, I never had any formal training in this kind of thing, in the writing or the podcasting or anything like that. So it is something you can learn even without that that specific background so i think that's i think it's just it's good for anyone who wants to jump in um and do it and yeah look basketball monster obviously that's the the rankings now that everyone refers to when we do podcast or writing and we say a top 20 player a top 50 player it's usually the basketball mm -hmm. monster one yeah. so so there is a lot of um respect i think across the whole community whether it's from the analysts or from the listeners and the readers that the, the, the stuff that you guys do over there is is sort of top of the tree at the moment. So, um, so, f so outside of fantasy basketball, I mean, I said you've just got your little one down to to sleep, hopefully. Um, so you've got a, a young family. So what outside of when you're not writing and when you're not working in your day job, what is it that you like to do? What are your sort of your other hobbies? I guess family is probably a, a bit of a priority as it is for most of us, but, but what are the sort of things that you like doing? Yeah. I mean, again, during the fantasy season, there's not much, there's not much downtime. It's, it's working during the day. It's coming home in the evening and yeah, having dinner and, and getting organized. And then, yeah, once, once the little fellas are asleep, then it's, yeah, onto the laptop and, and writing an article or starting an article, doing some research, doing a live chat, managing my own fantasy teams. And and then, yeah, by the time you spend an hour, an hour and a half doing that, you know, most evenings, then it's time for bed and, and rinse and repeat. And, yep. and yeah, it's a, it's a long, it's a long season. Um, so, you, you know, yeah, now in the, in the, in the playoffs, I get to just sit back and, and watch and enjoy basketball for the actual basketball rather than the st statistical side of the game um but then yeah i mean like i said i i love sport i love aussie rules afl i'm a big adelaide crows fan i love cricket um i love formula one i haven't missed the formula one race in in over 20 years um i don't get to watch them all all live anymore but yeah always watch them on on delay so if anyone's on twitter don't send me any spoilers after <laughs> but, um yeah, and I know you spoke to some of the other guys about favourite, you know, movies or TV shows. I'm, I'm not a movie guy. I, I don't have time to sit down and, and watch <laughs> movies. But, um, I love Survivor, the TV show. That's probably my one of my favourites that I always catch, whether that be the American series or the Australian series. Um, again, I think I've seen every one of both since since it started twenty odd years ago. So yeah, um, okay. yeah, but yeah, with with all the loves of, of those sports and, you know, yeah, it's one thing after another, it's, it's NBA into AFL, AFL into cricket and then cricket into NBA and, and formula one in all, all between that. So um, yeah, there's not much time in between. No, and we are pretty lucky here actually with the, with the way that a lot of the sports line up for us. So because the, the NBA regular season sort of finishes around the time that rugby league and, and AFL start and then those sports finish around the time that NBA sort of preseason is kicking off and, and into the season. Um, so, yeah, like much the same, I'm, I'm sort of sport as much as I can. Um, not as much AFL. I, I, I support Essendon and, and I do, I love mm -hmm. AFL, but I grew up playing rugby league. So it's more rugby league for me. Um, they just had the uh, gather round in, in Adelaide. Did you manage to get to any of that or was it was it a i guess within adelaide within the city was it a was it noticeable that this big event was taking place yeah it was huge it was a it was a massive build up and i think for us here it was it almost had that afl grand final sort of yeah. feel to it um and i guess with everyone you know coming into the state and traveling over and and all the teams and the games and um i guess all the extra things that went around the games with you know the food and the concerts and you know in in the city and we had a zip line over the river you know and and all these sorts of things and just getting out to the regions to the adelaide hills and into norwood and i think the future ones there'll be you know yeah up into the barossa and down to mclaren vale so showcasing yeah. a bit of the state and yeah together for another three years is is huge and and great for us and um yeah it was a it was an amazing weekend to, to have all eight, nine afl games in the one place across what was it four four days i think so four days yeah yeah, yeah. yeah was, so i think it was huge for anyone who, who 
I mean, not obviously a lot of Americans won't have a clue what we're talking about, but um, the gather round was where, yeah, all, all teams, so a whole round was played in Adelaide. Um, it was at two two separate grounds. Um, that's right, isn't yeah. it? There was one at, so one three, at uh, three separate grounds, three Adelaide separate Oval. Grounds. Yeah, one, two games at, at Norwood Oval, which is literally only five, ten minutes out of the city, and then yeah. a game in Mount Barker, which is in the Adelaide Hills, which is about 30, 40 minute drive out of, out of the city. Yeah, and so this is it's something they've done in rugby league for the last four years, I think, and and now doing it in AFL. And and a friend of mine actually um, popped something up. I think it was on Facebook or something I saw, and, and he he sort of suggested that the the NBA look at doing something like that as opposed to an All Star game where they have a they pick a city and and they just play over five days. They every team plays, or so I don't know how that would work because there's so many teams and you can really only play at one court. So whether it was, whether it's hosted by Texas and you just play at yeah. sort of the, the major cities there, I don't know, but. Um, Sounds like the COVID bubble. A little bit. Yeah. Like a, like a scheduled COVID bubble yeah. um, where all the teams are and have a bit of a, cause I mean, I, I don't know your thoughts specifically on the all-star game and the all-star weekend, but for me, it's, it's a bit of a waste of time. Yeah. Um, other than the break, which is nice, in ter- from a fantasy perspective, we get a, a week off. Um, the game itself, I don't think, serves a huge purpose. Are you are you of that thinking as well, or you still enjoy sitting back and watching it? No, um, I think this was probably the first year where I haven't watched the game. I flicked it on for a couple of minutes, and again, it was just up and down, and there wasn't yeah. a real lot of points. I still like the three-point shootout. Um, the dunk contest can be a little bit hit or miss, but um, yeah, I mean, going, it's not... The game itself's not what it was going back, you know, 5, no. 10, 15 years ago where it was super competitive and, and everyone was out there to win. It's just a bit of a, yeah, a, a showcase game now. So, yeah, I'd like to see the NBA tweak it a little bit to make it a little bit more competitive. Yeah, I, I still think the concept behind it is worthwhile. So the voting of players and, and let's pick an all-star team. But, I mean, as we've seen throughout the season now, teams – teams aren't going to just let their players go and play in this muck around game and, and go a hundred percent because they, they can't risk injuries and that sort of thing. So yeah, who knows if anything will change, but um, so you're with, with a young family, you're spending a lot of time at home. Is travel something that you've done a lot of sort of in the past or, or, or coming up? Have you got uh, any favorite destinations, whether it, whether it be in Australia or internationally? Uh, yeah, I've been fortunate enough to do a little bit of traveling, yeah, um, after marriage and, and before kids. So, um, been to been to Fiji a couple of times, and that's one of my, my favorite spots. That was my second um, overseas destination, and then went back there for a honeymoon. So, that's got a bit of a soft, soft spot yeah. with me. And yeah, the Fijian people are just so warm and welcoming. And again, then through through Europe, I mean, all of Europe is amazing and something different and the culture and the food and, and the scenery and the towns and the cities and the history are incredible. But, yeah, I loved um, Switzerland and, and Austria in particular with their, you know, mountains and peaks and lakes and streams. And, yeah, that's that's pretty incredible. And, and then probably the next on the list, um, we did a trip to, to Norway a few years back and the, the Norwegian coast with their fjords and their little villages and and again whether we went in winter so we had had the snow and had a white christmas and yeah the scenery was just just spectacular and stunning so three different very different regions but yeah they all all sort of um yeah made their mark and would happily recommend or go back to to those places um yeah yeah if i get the chance yeah, it, it it is. Once you got kids, it is a little a little trickier. There's more um, more things to think about. Um, we're about to head off with our kids, and it's four adults now going. It's, yeah. it's not even. We can't even get them on as kids. So the Very price. So we're off to Europe um, nice. for a few weeks later in the year. So in, in September, and and yeah, you've just got to factor in a lot more <laughs> when you're taking teenagers with you. Um, yeah. You can't sort of. It's not like a two-year-old and you can just drag them around to wherever you want to go and, and it's bad luck. They You sort of have to actually ask them where would you like to go and yeah. factor that into your decision-making. So, uh, yeah, so it does get tricky. Um, 
so this, I mean, this, obviously we're not talking too much about fantasy basketball here, but looking ahead, um, well, actually, because you because you're obviously a basketball monster and, and a lot of the projections and that sort of thing. Like we know Josh, he does all these projections and, and but you, you do projections as well. Um, no. You don't do projections. Cause I know when we, did you used to do them? No, I haven't. So Josh, Josh and Kyle do their own set of projections. Okay. So it's Kyle. Uh, that's right. Kyle. Yep. Okay. And then I do, uh, and then Josh and Kyle and I do all the preseason content. Yep. And then I do the in the, the throughout the season content. So two articles a week, um, a I guess like a schedule analysis of, of the week coming up, um, and then a waiver wire article every week, and then yeah, two live chats a week yep. as well. So um, yeah, Kyle and Kyle and Josh do a, a great job on the projections, and yeah, that's that's their, their little baby, that's and right. it, it, it's a tough job of of sort of seeing you know yeah the background and before the season, I obviously get to have a, have a sneak peek and, and have yep. a look and yeah, understand that the amount of work that goes into that is yeah, pretty incredible. And, and both of those guys do an amazing job. Yeah, it is. Yeah. I know I did. I, Cause I knew Josh did them and I knew one of you did it and I forgot it was Kyle, not you. So, but so the, the question is, is going to be about Victor Wembanyama and next season where, two-part question where are you where do you think you'll be comfortable taking him in drafts next season and the second part is based on hype and and all the uh everything surrounding him coming into the draft and coming into the season where do you think his adp is going to fall uh obviously it will change closer to the season that sort of thing but initially where do you think people are going to be taking him so i think initially we probably have to start somewhere in the second round maybe maybe middle to, to back end of the second round. And then, yeah, the point that you just made is a good one around the hype. And I think once we get to the preseason and say he has a massive game or two similar to what Chet did, um, yep. you know, in, in summer league, not quite leading into the season in the preseason, but I think his hype is only going to grow and people are going to want him on their team and go earlier and earlier. So I think... By the time the season starts, it wouldn't surprise me to see him sort of go in the early second round, potentially top 15. Um, I think we're probably going to be talking about him in maybe the same area as an Anthony Davis or a Jaron Jackson Jr. Um, so, yeah, it's going to be really interesting to see. I mean, again, I think you're going to want him, want to have him on your team just for that yeah. fun factor <laughs> alone and whatever – comes after that is is a bonus um but yeah there's no doubt in my mind he'll be the highest drafted rookie that i've ever seen and and may well end up um yeah as a as a first round player at the end of his rookie season which i think only a couple of players have have done before so yeah it's it's pretty exciting to see what's coming it is yeah i think i i've got him i think i've got him in the early 30s in my rankings at the moment um but much like you, I think with the, the hype and that sort of thing, there's no way he falls that far. Uh, I, I think he's going to be um, – ideally, yes, yeah, sort of I'd, I'd like to get him in the second round, sort of around maybe around 25, 30, but there's going to be people that are going to reach. And as you said, he's just going to be fun. Like I think people are going to want him just because of how unique he is. And so yeah. – um, yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if his ADP is up around that, around the turn. So yeah, sort of yeah. around that fourteen mark, fifteen yeah. mark, and and, um, and and without thinking too much about the first round, like you know, if say the back end of the first, then there's you know your Trey Young or your Steph Curry or those sort of guys, and then you can get Victor on the way back. You know, that's a pretty good duo to start your roster. So um, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's of of having done my rankings already, and I've had a bit of a look at it and they're going to change, but it's interesting already looking. I think there's going to be from about pick, oh, I haven't got them in front of me, but I think it was from about pick seven or eight through to, oh, like 15, 18. There's, mm-hmm. bas- there's basically a, almost a, a full round worth of players that could end in the first round. Um, but like guys like Kawhi, Anthony yeah. Davis. Um, yeah. Paul George. Paul George, like all these yeah. guys who, who this year have had some injuries, but yeah, Anthony like, Davis, 
Anthony Davis, um, and like look how good Kawhi has been since he came back. He's been the Kawhi of old, and he's a top yeah. five fantasy guy. But he won't go in the first round, no way. No. Um, so it's it's going to actually be, I think, a little bit similar to this season. I think picking in the second half of the first round is going to be ideal because you could very well get two first round players. Um, mm-hmm. Whereas after I think about around about pick eighteen, pick twenty, the 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 tiers sort of drop off, and and you do the tiers, don't you? Yes, is that right? Yeah, that's yeah. me. Yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah. I knew Josh had you on for something yeah. always before the season, and that's doing the tiers. So yeah, that's somehow uh, become become our baby. Something we did probably <laughs> five or six years ago with the positional tiers for, and then yeah, it's it's kind of stuck and grown and. Yeah. Um, yeah, my my little baby in the preseason. Yeah, um, yeah. Look, it's it's going to be interesting anyway to see see what happens with Wembenyama. Do you have a preferred landing spot for him for next season? Like a team that you would like to see him on, or a team that you wouldn't like to see him on? No, not necessarily. No, I'm happy with whether it's Detroit, the Spurs, Charlotte, whoever. I'm I'm not fast. I'm just excited to see him play and and out on the court and yeah. Hopefully he, he stays healthy and we don't get another Chet Holmgren and mm. he's out for the year. And and I guess that was the big thing this year with just those players missing so many games, whether it be Giannis and Joel Embiid. And obviously the mellow ball had had a, had a bad year and, and Tyrese Halliburton missed a lot of time as well. And, you know, you never know what's going to happen with, with Victor. But, um, you know, yeah, if he does somehow come in and play 65 to 70 games in his rookie season, you know, he'll... He should be top top ten, top twelve in in total value, and yeah, just incredible in per game as well. So he'll he'll be dominant wherever he is. Yeah, I think so. It's it's yeah, I'm excited. Um, and and I think we we did a little bit of a comparison with one of the guys I I, I spoke to and and had a look at Carl Anthony Towns' rookie season, yep. and he was sort of an eighteen and eight with one point eight blocks and. He was only hitting, I think, 0.83s or something in his rookie season, so he hadn't really expanded out too much. And and he was a top 20 player, I think, top 25 yeah. player in his rookie season. So, I mean, I could easily see Victor Wembanyama averaging something similar to that, but with double the blocks and double yes. the three-pointers. So, yeah. Um, yeah. yeah, going to be very interesting. Um, cool. So, look, that, that we can probably wrap it up there. Um, I can let you get back to making sure... Everything is peaceful in your house. Yeah, um, so far, so good. So far, so good. Before you head off, um, I mean, I know it is downtime um, and our content is scaling back, but wh- what have you got or Basketball Monster got planned for the next, oh, I guess, three months before we start talking about pre-season? Yeah, not not a real lot, to be honest with you. It's, it's yeah, again, sort of our, downt- our downtime um, and, yeah, we've still got playoff projections Um on the side at the moment and then yeah we'll have a have a bit of a break and then uh, last season we opened the site i think it was mid to late august off the top of my head so i think that's sort of a very rough timeline again um i normally get back into writing my player comments for my tears in around mid to late july just to sort of get a start on it and yeah once the the draft has sort of happened and, and free agency is sort of happening in, in the background. Um, but we sort of know with those main guys and where they're going to be and, and what they're going to do. So, um, yeah, what's we're in the middle of April, so I've got a couple of months off. And then, yeah, get going again in, in July and all ramp up for a, another start in October. Yep, enjoy some footy, enjoy some uh, some yes. other sport while we wait. So, um, so yeah, look, thanks for coming on. Um, that will do it for today's show. Uh, remember, you can jump over to our website, fbibasketball.com. Uh, as I said, Matt Lawson's got a ton of his Dynasty stuff. He's, uh, by the time this is released, his uh, Dynasty podcast should have started. I think he's got a few guests lined up, that sort of thing. So, um, head over there and jump into our Discord channel. We're still very active in there. Follow us on Spotify, Google Podcasts, Apple Podcasts. Uh, give us a thumbs up, subscribe. That would be great. Until next time, catch up. You just listened to another episode from the Fantasy Basketball International Podcast Network. 
Thanks for joining us. And for more information about joining our community, please check out our website at fbibasketball.com.